Uh, good morning to everyone. Special congratulatory message to the graduates. Must be an amazing day for you all. Uh, your accomplishment is one that you will lean on and use as you make your way forward. I am here representing our community, Kansas City, and the work that we'd like to get done to put Kansas City in its rightful place as one of the best cities to live in our entire nation. And we're gonna to continue to work on that. I'm also here because I wanna represent my family and share with you why I believe big dreams can come true. We can make what seems impossible, possible. And in doing that, I'd like for you to think about the role as graduates from William Jewell, the School of Critical Thinking, how you will use your critical thinking and your giving heart to make your lives better, your family's lives, William Jewell, our community here regionally and the United States, especially given this time that we are in. So a little bit about my story. Uh, my story is one that started um, many years ago, we'll just say 60 or more <laughs> years ago. But what's really important about my story is in my childhood, like all of the rest of us, we get so many bits and pieces that ultimately become our foundation. My beginning was right off of uh, just about 39th and Prospect. And I grew up in the inner city there for a good bit of our time. And that experience was also assisted by looking at what was going on around us. I had great parents who were extremely encouraging uh, expected us to excel, grandmother that was a school teacher. But around me, by the time I was 10 years old, I'll never forget the image of my mother ironing our dad's uniform, watching JFK's funeral on the television. That was when I was almost six. By the time I was 10, Martin Luther King had been assassinated followed shortly thereafter by Bobby Kennedy. And as a 10 year old, I thought to myself, really, this is what we do when we disagree. We kill each other, we assassinate one another. There must be a better way. And I went about that path trying to really understand what is the better way. Another input, when I was in the second and third grade, my siblings and I, I have two wonderful sisters and two brothers. We were bused to Hell Cook Elementary School as part of the desegregation effort, an all white school. And that experience also did two things for me. It says, don't let a situation that seems to marginalize you hold you down. There's always someone looking who's willing to mentor. But it also solidified my mind Education is the way forward. And so always in the back of my mind, I'm thinking about education. So education becomes the foundation along with my family. And I go off to college. I was asked, are you gonna go to college? And I wanted to be a teacher because my grandmother was, but much like this environment, great advisors said, that's really not gonna work out for you so well. You don't have the temperament to teach second graders. <laughs> it's just not gonna work out for you, okay? So I went to Northwest and I chose to major in business with the idea that I'd have options and I could have some of the dreams going on in my head materialize and give back. So I went to Northwest and the experience at Northwest, while it is my dear alma mater, being there in the mid seventies was difficult. There were only 100 African-American students when I started. When I graduated four years lady, later, there were only 50 of us. It, it was a challenge, but it was one that I would not give up on, and I didn't, and I continued on. 
I left Northwest Missouri State still determined to be a teacher. My advisor, Johnny Imes, told me again, it's not going to work out for you. So she told me, you should go to UMKC in Kansas City, get a master's degree. And if you keep insisting on this teaching, you can at least teach college because second graders are just not going to work out. So I did. I went to UMKC, and that eventually led me to KPMG. And at KPMG, I had more mentors, mentors but I also learned that I could teach in the classroom. And I did 11 years at KPMG, and I decided it was time to be audited rather than be the auditor. And I made the decision with great angst to go into a field that at the time had very, very few women and had hardly any black women, not to mention in the role that I would eventually assume. But Black and Beach provided a great career for me, and it helped me put the next level of this foundation in place. Shortly after I was there, I went to a leadership development class and they asked us to develop a mission statement. And I was 34 years old then, and I'm proud to tell you that it's still my mission statement. And it is to make a difference in the lives of others through living my life with integrity, compassion, and generosity. And it remains who I am, and education remains my North Star. So I went to Black and Beach, everything was well. Uh, my grandfather, Grandpa Daniel, died one month before I joined Black and Beach. And Grandpa did a lot of amazing things in his life. He took the family to Africa to start a fire department. When my dad was only 16 years old, they lived there for a year. They all became fire chiefs uh, for the Kansas City, Missouri Fire Department. But it would be almost two decades after he died that I would discover and take the time to listen to eight hours of audio where my uncle interviewed our grandfather so he could capture history. And in doing so, I learned something that really affected me. I learned about this whole education thing. My great, great grandmother was way before us recognizing that education was important. Literacy is important. If you cannot read proficiently at the third grade level, you have an 81% chance of living in poverty. Not until you get out of school, not until you have a job, but for the rest of your life. And my grandmother, while not availed of those statistics, she knew the importance of reading. In fact, to the point that she, when she was caught reading, had a finger cut off, trying to learn how to read. By the time my grandmother died, she was missing six fingers. That's the level of determination and commitment that she had to education. And of course, I'm sure she knew someday her kids, grandkids would know that and would honor that in a way that say education is a big deal. And if you put your mind to it, anything is possible. And I cannot tell you how profound that information was to me. First, to hear it in my grandfather's words. Second, to imagine it. And we talk about the price of education today. She paid the ultimate price in many ways as a slave losing her fingers. But I added that to my list of things on my foundation. Because when, when bad things happen or you learn about bad things, I say you cannot let them define you. But if you're smart enough to let them reshape you and make you better and make you more determined, then it was well worth it. So if you fast forward to today, the times that we're in, the Reverend mentioned it, race relations. We have elections on the way. There's a lack of empathy and put on top of that this pandemic that we have. 
that doesn't allow your families, my family, to be here today. But I thought about it from a race relations perspective, from a perspective of my grandmother had a dream for us. And we are living, as my niece says, we are living her wildest dreams because we have our education. We didn't have to pay our fingers for it. But I know she knows that we are doing this work. And so I thought about it from a race relations perspective. How do we deal with that? And I personally believe education is still the way forward. When we can give education to students and ask them to go back into the community, then we will all advance the whole discussion that's going on in our nation right now. So in thinking about my grandmother, Dr. Walls mentioned the legacy fund that I set up at Northwest Missouri State. My grandmother said, you shouldn't talk about what you do because there are always others doing more. But I have to tell you what a goose bump moment when I told Northwest Missouri State, I am donating $1 million to help other black students. Because when you get into the race relations con conversation, all of that angst comes rushing back. And I felt like I could do this in honoring my grandmother, my broader family, and make other people's dreams come true and help them create their own legacies. So when we think about today, the place that we're in, even with that, making what seems impossible possible, we still have a lot of work to do. And if we think about the vision that we have for Kansas City, when I was on the chamber, we spent a lot of time talking about the vision for Kansas City. And we talked about it in the context of, we wanna have access to education, we wanna have healthcare, we wanna have transportation, we want to have growth. But most of all, we want community that works for all. And this is my special plea to the graduates. It's interesting as we sit around and design the future, how can we design the future for two generations, three generations behind us and not include them in that conversation? So I ask that we all work toward this vision that we have for Kansas City of growth that puts us on the national scale of dealing with some of the issues because when we come together and have the items that I just said, then we have shared prosperity. We have inclusion, I see the flags here about inclusion. So I, I'm asking that we all work toward that together and be mindful that what we do really does matter. It really does matter. And as we think about the different setbacks that we have in life, let's not think about them as setbacks. Opportunity to do something different, something better, and something more. I will tell you that President Obama left a quote here recently, and it says, no matter what you've done, it isn't enough in this time that we're in. And it's not so much about the money, while we're all happy that we can do that. He said, it's really about lending your voice to what matters. And there is no more important time than now. You know, what I talked about when I was 10 years old, this is five, 10 times fold of that. The Reverend talked about the times that we're in. And so lending our voice to this is what we really need. So I, I would ask that you combine the critical thinking that you have put to work here at William Jewell, your giving heart, in your voice to make for a much, much better future for us, our kids, our grandkids, and make all those who are looking down today, I hope my grandmother is, saying it was well worth it. So I ask again that you go out and make what seems impossible possible by giving back to others and giving back to your university and the community.
that would be my request to a group of young people who I have no doubt whatsoever you can and will get that done. Again, congratulations on an incredible honor to graduate from William Jewell College. And thank you so much for having me back.